Amen. Praise be to God. Well, I welcome each one of you. I welcome each and every one of you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, there is no other name that is greater than the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so we thank God for another opportunity to gather just to acknowledge him, to worship his great name, and to give him thanks and praise for all that he's done, all that he's doing, and all that he's about to do. And uh, such a beautiful song. Thank you, Keith. Great. He's a great, great God. You are God to us. He's a great, great God, and he's a God to us. He's our daddy. He's our Abba. He's our father. He's our everything. And uh, <laughs> when I keep thinking about that, I just have to laugh because uh, if God be for you, truly you can be against you. No principality, no power, no devil, no demon, no man, no woman, no situation, no circumstance can be against you once you know and you have true revelation that the Lord is with you. And uh, we have so much to thank God for this morning. And I, and I am rejoicing in my heart that I have a big daddy and he's, he's interested in my affairs and he's looking after me and he's providing for me. And, uh, you know, David uh, had this revelation of, and such a relation, deep relationship with God that God would recognize that David was a man after his own heart. And, uh, you know, it's so important to know that we are here to lift up his great name, to hallow his name, and to exalt him, to give him thanks and give him praise. And I, ju I just want to first welcome everybody. Um, I know that Donna has already done that, but uh, I see Kelvin. Bless you, Kelvin. Welcome. You look at, he's looking very studious with his glasses on and everything else, deep in thought. I know he's in meditation in respect of what God is speaking to him at this moment, saying to him at this moment in time. So we welcome you, um, Kelvin. And uh, we, for those of you who don't know, Kelvin is uh, the dear husband of, of uh, our dear evangelist Jenny. And I noticed that she has her own space. She's on the right side of my screen as Kelvin's on the left side of my screen. So we welcome both of you uh, over here in London. And we had the pleasure of uh, connecting with them on Saturday. And uh, we enjoyed the presence of God at uh, Sinatra's concert. And uh, it was such a blessing to just rejoice together, just to dance together, just to lift up the name of the Lord together. And uh, though they would uh, travel uh, many, many miles and uh, just pre pretty much kept come off the plane, they still had the energy to get on their feet and dance and lift up the name of Jesus. There's no greater name, hallelujah. So we thank you, both of you. We welcome both of you and we appreciate both of you. And uh, we will be hearing shortly from our dear brother, uh, Kelvin. And so uh, we bless you. Uh, welcome again, uh, Grace, uh, Fiona, Donna. Thank you again for just ushering us into the presence of God. And, uh, and when I say that, just, you know, praying before um, the devotion, the service, as, as you always do, and uh, just uh, recalling all that God is and all that he's done for us. And uh, thank you, uh, bless you, Keith, for administering the song, and welcome, and welcome, um, Junior, uh, Matthew 6.33. That's his alias name, Matthew 6, verse 33. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't need to, uh, I shouldn't need to recite the scripture, but it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God 
and his righteousness, not your own righteousness, not self-righteousness, oh, no. right. and all these things shall be added unto you. And uh, all these things concerning everything that God has for us shall be added unto us because God knows best. He knows the end from the beginning. So he knows invariably what we need to do to fulfill hit the call on our lives. And so it's, it's good to trust in God. It's good to have confidence, righteous confidence in God and to know that he's with us and he's for us. And if you have that abiding sense that he's with you and he's for us, you know what? Nothing then can be against us truly against us in the sense of have effect lasting effect upon us because the joy of the lord becomes our strength he is our strength and we maintain that peace that passes all understanding in other words goes beyond our natural comprehension because our natural reaction to the things are based on our emotions and our feelings but when you're steadfast in god you're like a firmer stack Christian. You maintain a level in God that you cannot be moved. You're not a thermometer Christian that when situations don't look like it's going your way, you feel down. And when it's seemingly going your way, you feel up. It's not an emotional roller coaster. It shouldn't be. But you should maintain a consistency and a trust in God that is impeccable because you know that truly God is with you and God is for you. And so we bless God this morning. Um, I'm just going to read um, a psalm and, uh, you know, the, the um, scriptures um, encourage us to encourage one another in psalms and in songs and hymns and, you know, everything that is good. The, the word of God encourages us to encourage one another. And so I'm always encouraged by um, the Psalms and especially in respect of David and, uh, and the relationship that he had with this, with, with, that he had with Jehovah God. And I'm just gonna read from uh, Psalms 111 and then we're gonna enter into just a time of thanksgiving and praise and just an acknowledgement of the Father for who he is and his son, Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings, the great, the Lion of Judah. And the, so I'm gonna read um, from Psalms 111. And it says, praise the Lord, hallelujah, the highest praise. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart in the company of the upright and in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all those who delight in them. Splendid and majestic is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. His righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonderful acts to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful, full of loving compassion. He has given food to those who fear him with all inspired reverence. So those who fear him, and I have to keep reminding us uh, as believers, fear is not the sense of trepidation or you're afraid of God. Fear is that desire to love God, the desire to do all that is pleasing to God. In other words, that sense and that awareness that without God, you are absolutely nothing. Life is pointless without God and knowing that you have an intimate relationship with God. It's, it's a sense of saying that I could gain everything and yet if I have God, it means nothing. Life is futile. So we have to understand the reverent fear of God is a sense of, God, I've got to please you in everything I do. In other words, again, it goes back to um, Matthew 6, 33. And uh, it's important to remember that. And so he says, he has given food to those who fear him. 
with awe inspired reverence. He will remember his covenant forever. He, and we have, we have a better covenant with God. We have a, a because Christ died for each and every one of us. So by virtue of that, we have become sons of God. And when I say sons of God, we are sons and daughters of God. In other words, we have a rich inheritance in our Savior and through our Savior, our Lord and Jesus Christ. And so we are heirs of the Father and we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. So we have a rich inheritance. He will remember his covenant forever. He has declared and made known to his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. We have a rich inheritance. The inheritance of the nation, that means that there's something that God plants in us and it goes beyond what we can see or what we can even fathom or understand. It's the inheritance of the nation. God has given that to every believer. In other words, God has given us authority and the right and the ability to know that what we are, the purpose of us being born again is not to be mediocre and insignificant. It's so that we will make a difference in this time with it, wherever we are. We are a presence and we are a lighthouse of God. And God has given us the nations by virtue of saying, whatever you have been assigned to do, whatever you have been called to do, God is behind you 100%. And he wants to fulfill his purpose through each and every one of us that will exceed what our minds can even comprehend or our hearts can even believe. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above that truly what we can even ask, think, imagine, dream, or even fathom according to the power that works in us. We're our powerhouse on the inside. Greater is he that is in us than truly he that is in the world. And so he's given us the nations. The works of his hands are truth and absolute justice. All his precepts are sure, established, reliable, trustworthy. They are, they are upheld forever and ever. They are done in absolute truth and uprightness. He has sent redemption to his people. He has uh, ordained his co covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name, inspiring reverence and godly fear. The reverent fear of the Lord is the beginning, the prerequisite, the absolutely essential, the alphabet of wisdom. A good understanding and a teachable heart are possessed by all those who do the will of the Lord. His praise, his praise endures forever. His praise, I love that, his praise endures forever. So if you've got his praise on the inside, it's eternal. It's eternal. It will endure forever. You'll be praising God right into the kingdom. So it's not only when you get to a concert. You praise God all the time. In all things, you give God praise. And the word of God says, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. So praise is a continual thing. It's a lifestyle of acknowledging all that the Father is and the Son, Jesus Christ. And so this morning, we're going to give him some praise. We're going to move heaven and earth in acknowledgement of who the Father is. And if it's just a matter of just thanking God because he's God, just thank God for it because he's God. But hey, we thank God for life. We thank God for waking us up this morning. We thank God that we have a divine purpose on our life. We thank God that we are his children. We thank God that we are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. We are a peculiar people. Peculiar, not in weird. We're not weird people, but we're specially chosen by God. That's what that means. Peculiar means specially chosen by God, that we should show forth the praises unto him who have called us out of darkness into this such a wonderful, growing and radiant light. We, we are a lighthouse that surely must be set on a hill, that we should shine forth the glory of God. 
And so it's not what we see in our natural eye. And I always say this, I've, you don't know that your beacons of light in the spirit realm, when the enemy sees you, he sees a light on the inside of you and it's behoven on you, or shall I say, it's you have a responsibility to allow, uh, to allow that shine, light to shine forth from you. And that comes through intimacy and relationship and pressing into the presence of God on a, on a daily basis. You are forever conscious of his presence. And the more you in his presence, the, the greater the glow. Why do I know this? Because even demons and devils, they know that. Even people that are in a that have esoteric belief, that have deep, um, wicked, twisted, evil beliefs, they know that. They know that they can't trouble or can't affect the life of a Christian or a life of, let me just say, a believer that truly knows who they are in Christ. They, we cannot be moved. We cannot be moved by, the, by devils and demons. And I know that because I've interviewed a witch doctor. <laughs> we've, Grace and I, we've interviewed a witch doctor and a witch doctor, we, we, you know, you have to approach them. They look normal, but they have a different, deep, there's, their belief systems are totally, totally warped and upside down. They're actually grossly deceived in terms of what they do. And uh, we, we interviewed uh, a witch doctor and uh, <laughs> He said, uh, what do you do? And he says, well, I do acts on behalf of people. And I said, really? I say, what are that? I say, I do good things. If people want certain things done, then I, 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 we fulfill their wishes and we make sure they come to pass. I said, uh, okay, so um, do you ever find any difficulty when you carry out these acts? He said, yeah, actually, there's some people that uh, when... Uh, our masters being, you know, the, the, the witch doctor has, he has to report to certain people in the hierarchy and who have seemingly authority amongst them, you see. We know Satan is behind all of these things. But um, he says, when I'm given an assignment and I go, there's certain people, they pray and they believe God and they, and they sing and... Uh, and there's a light in them and that, that shines in them. And when we try and put our spells on them or whatever, we seemingly cannot affect them. And the thing is, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an awesome and terrible thing when we can't do that because we have to re report back to our, our master, so to speak. And when we come back and we've failed in our assignment, we get whipped or we get we get disciplined for that. And uh, it's a fearful thing. But there's certain people, when they're praying, we just can't touch them. You have to know the authority that you have on the inside of you, saints. And we can't quiver or be insipid. We have to know that we stand strong in Jesus Christ. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And so let your light shine forth that the world may see and devils and demons will run in terror <laughs> because there's, it's a fearful thing when they see, see a child of God and they can't touch them. They get whipped by their masters. Praise be to God. So we're just going <laughs> to, hallelujah. So we're just going to praise God this morning. We're going to give God thanks and praise. We're going to bless his holy name because he's worthy of our praise. God is worthy. He's a faithful God. He's forever looking over each and every one of us. We are his children, and he's very mindful of us. And so in all things, we're going to give God thanks this morning. And so I just want you to open um, on mic if you can and just give God thanks and praise this morning. Just acknowledge him that even the fact that you're woken up this morning, it is a blessing and it is an opportunity to wake up in the presence of Almighty God. Yeah. To know that you know i have a purpose this morning hallelujah so i'm gonna go that there and i'm gonna shine for jesus shine shine so let's thank god right now let's begin to lift up his great name and praise 
execute and then execute yeah. him all the glory that is oh, great, 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 Father, you are the one that kept us. We bless your name. Oh, hallelujah. Glory your mercy. You are Lord of Lord. You are and never let us go. You promised never to leave us nor forsake us. And here we are. This Zion, morning, Lord, you we you reign from your holy you deserve it all. Father, you, no one else, Father, who deserves this praise, deserves this worship, Father. You are the King of kings. You are your the Lord of lords, the great I am that I am. You are the mighty. You are the Lord. Father, we thank you this morning that you are standing for us. You are omniscient, omniscient. You are all knowing, Father God. You know the Lord that and of the men and women who trust right in the Lord. Lord. And we know, as David has said, Father, most blessed is all that trust in the Lord. Father, for you will be our rescue. You will be our strength. You will be, Father Lord. It is our arms that fight for us. Our great shield. Hallelujah. The great general. Father, we thank you this morning that you've given us a hope, a hope to fight for, a hope to live for, a hope, Father Lord, knowing that we are assured, hallelujah, to the day of the end, that Father Lord, you will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. We have been obedient, Father, we thank you that you have given us that in our heart and the characteristic, Father, to follow you. Thank you for the fruit of the Spirit, that yet you are for the place of us, grown in us. We thank you for the right of the Lord of Father in our life that is now taking a We thank you for making us the way that you do in your life. We thank you that we are still able to this morning. We are still in our right mind. Hallelujah. We still wake up, Father Lord, knowing that you are Savior. We have lost our memory. Hallelujah. Father Lord, we could look to our wives, our husbands, our children, Father Lord, our, our, our fathers, wherever we are, and Father, we can still recognize them because we're still in our right frame of mind. Despite, Father Lord, what it is, despite the scenario, the situation, despite, Father Lord, the heart, but Father, we are still here. And oh, glory to God, you are still, Father, exalted. You are still lifted up. Father, we are still here, Father Lord, all our hearts. Thank you. We can lift our hands with glory. Because the strength that we have is none of, none of our own. But Father, we belong to you. Holy Lord, so we use that same strength which you have given us. Father, we want to worship you. You are Father. We pray that yet the breath that you give us this morning. And is everything that has pressed for praise of the Lord. Lord, we pray this morning. Here we are. We pray this, our Lord. So, Father, Lord, as you breathe life into us, Father, breathe into us a soul. Give us, Father, Lord, yes, we thank you, thank you, spirit in us. We thank you, Father, Lord, for keeping us to this point that we, our Father, could just lift you up and us, Father, glorify your name because you, Father, Lord, has given us yet a life as a point for your Son, Christ Jesus. He came, Father, Lord, and gave his life for us upon the cross. That Father Lord, that we yet should be brought Thank back you. onto your glory, your hands, from which you came to the Father and the Lord Jesus, bring us back. So we thank you, Father. Thank you, Father Lord, that you have given us that comfort to make things right before the Lord thy God, Yahweh. Father, we thank you for yet that you are the Father. Blessed be and yet the Son that you have sent to give me thank you. There is no one that you have been like you. It's the Father, Lord, that you will glorify the Lord. There's none like you. Thank you, Jesus. There is no one like you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we thank you, Lord, Father, for your blood. There is no There is no longer so we glorify you 
Jesus, bless your holy name. Amen. We thank God this morning. We continue to thank God and uh, thank you. Welcome each and every one of you. And for those um, who are coming on just now, we welcome you, Sandra. Bless you. We welcome you, Fiona. Bless you. Um, Margaret, bless you. Cheryl, we welcome you. Bless you. Shanique, we welcome you, bless you. And uh, Marcia, we welcome you, bless you. And uh, we're in the glorious presence of Almighty God right now, great Jehovah. And uh, I just want you to have a sense of uh, expectation that God is gonna move in a tr such a tremendous way and that you're gonna be empowered this morning. You will not leave the same way that you came on. And so we always have to be expecting that our Father will deliver something that is beyond what we can perceive or understand. In other words, he's going to exceed our expectations. So let's just continue to be mindful and reverent of God this morning and know that by the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, we're going to have him lead and direct whatever is to be said and done this morning. We believe that it will come truly from the front room of grace. Welcome, Seema. And again, welcome, everybody. And uh, so we just want to, at that, this time, acknowledge our, our dear brother, our dear friend, um, the dear husband and the love of uh, Jenny, Jenny's life right now. I can see that she's smiling in Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> Praise be to God. And so, look. Hallelujah. Welcome, brother. I, keep, I want everybody to express your love towards, uh, uh, towards Kelvin right now. Just welcome. Welcome, my brother Kelvin. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome to Britain. Hallelujah. Thank and you. I know it's your first time here. 
Rainy um, Britain. <laughs> well, we welcome you. Um, we welcome you. Um, welcome. So, Thank you, everyone. It's not, it's not his first time. He's, uh, he's born with our sister, so it's not his first time. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not his first time. He's <laughs> familiar with Britain. Go ahead, Kelvin. Bless you. You're welcome. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Chris. And uh, the First Lady Grace, I met Pastor Chris. Uh, we met. I met him face to face the first time. That was uh, just this past Saturday. Where yeah. on, I going to meet to go to uh, Wembley, and uh, we were sitting at the KFC waiting for them. As I was uh, sitting down, I was contemplating: are, are these people coming or not? And all of a sudden, something said, "Just get up." Get, I just got up and I was walking towards the door, the main door outside. And then I heard my name, Calvin. There was, <laughs> he held me for some reason. He knew me. I said, how does he know me? But he called my name. He held my hand. I said, oh, Pastor Chris. I was, I was actually surprised that at that moment when I was thinking, were they coming? Are they coming? I was trying to ask my wife, are you sure we are going? He said, don't worry. So I said, all of a sudden I stood up. I said, let me go outside. Then I met Pastor Chris at the entrance. We hugged, and then uh, I could see, oh, wow, it's a young man, this <laughs> fine young man, very tall, <laughs> taller than me. I said, you might be 11, 5, 11, or 6. Um, I'm not very tall. I'm just pro. I'm 6, too, you know, but I'm no, that's not true. It's, I'm not. <laughs> so we spoke, and then uh, we made our way to the van to meet with the First Lady Grace, and uh, on our way, we saw this guy who was begging for arms. You no, know, hey, please help me, help me. And then Pastor Chris stood. He was talking to this guy. I said, and Pastor, I was trying, Pastor, let's go. Let's go. This man, so, no. he asked the guy, do you know me? The guy looked, and then he looked again. He said, yeah, yeah. And then they started chatting right there. And then it went on. And then later, Pastor Chris came. He said, oh, give me money. He gave him some money. And they say, I knew this young guy, we were trying to rehabilitate him, but uh, he, he got, we got him all that he needed. We've tried, we fixed him up, but for some reason he went back to the old star and that was why probably he's still on the street begging for arms, you know. And we thank Pastor Chris so much for the time that he took, you know, to come. We drove about one and a half hours to Wembley with a wife and some church members in the van. We all had a good time chit-chatting here and there until we got there. We really had a wonderful time. I'm normally an outgoing person like that. Christian concert, I had in Chicago, I don't. They will say this person is coming and my, myself and my wife will all be busy. I'll stay home with my daughter if my wife is going to work. Anyways, to uh, make matters short i'm not going to take too much of your time my wife was saying yesterday just before we we're going out she told me oh auntie grace sent a message that if you want to take the devotion i'm saying oh i haven't really, really prepared but uh, i will pray i will see what the holy spirit will, will let me speak about so oh, you know you, you're fired i said hey hey it's a devotion this is not time for fire and brimstone and all that. So <laughs> put it at bay. So it's okay. Whatever the spirit will let will lead you, just bring it forth. So uh with that much I do what I, I want us to take a look at something that I have observed in in, in America, I've observed in other parts of the world, and especially in my country of origin, Ghana, or uh, let's say West Africa. I have seen something that bothers me so much we have prayed about it in our church i have made it known and uh, i know other you all know but sometimes what the devil is giving something it doesn't come the way that you think it will come with all those uh, somebody with uh, with the hoops and all that and with the ugly faces and all no 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 the devil knows how to package his stuff to give it to you that if you don't know the word the only thing <clears throat> excuse me, that God or Jesus gave it to us here on earth before he departed was prayer. Prayer is our weapon. It's, it's more than a bazooka. 
He didn't give us, oh, we should go and take arms, you know, rear arms and then fight the devil one-on-one. -on -one. Is That is not it. Our prayer is our weapon. So Amen. based on that, what I have observed is what I'm going to read about and what I think. I am like um, your brother Barnabas, who is an encourager in the scriptures. Amen. Was this encourager. I, I love to do that. So the church, they know that if we are down, I'm the one. Sometimes I observe things and I could see, let's do, uh, let's do something about this. And then it will happen. The other time too, I remember we were praying and I said, let us pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And there were, there were people who were like, the peace of Jerusalem, there's nothing going on. Why? I said, no, let I, every time it is my turn to take over, I asked that we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They didn't understand. And then boom, one Saturday, something happened. All of a sudden, they were like, what? How did Kevin know? I said, no. As many as led are led by the spirit, they are the sons of God. Amen. My brother, even there in Israel at that time, I kept calling him. He called me once and he said, Kevin, I'm on tour. We are busy, so I will get back with you. I said, ah. That day before that Saturday, I was itching. For the whole week, he called me. On a flight, he called me. I was at work. We spoke. And then something that whole week kept me, call your brother, call your brother. I couldn't reach my brother, so I left it. On Saturday, this event took place. And I was, oh, my God, what happened to Kofi in case, uh, you know, he happened to be around some of these areas. But thanks be to God. He said, I left there a day before this event took place. I said, thank you, Jesus. You know, so what I want to read, I love to read the scriptures myself and then to take it from another point and then we go. In Matthew 24, verses one through four. And uh, Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for, for, uh, for, to him for to show him the building of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, see you not all these things, verily I say unto you, there shall be not, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world. And this is where I want to dwell. And Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. That he said, take, that's Matthew 24, verse four. He said, take heed that no man, no man deceive you. This is very, 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 very serious. I have been sitting down sometimes meditating and looking out that what is it that is going on? I look at West Africa, especially, I'll only use Ghana as an example. I know a lot is going on here, everywhere in the world. The devil has packaged a lot of things for, you know, that as weapon, or sometimes we don't even know they are weapons for us to fight us, to defeat us, you know, but thanks be to God that we, uh, Jesus being the head of the body, he sees it and by his spirit, he delivers the message only if we can put down our ears and listen what the whole what the holy spirit is saying these are dangerous times that we are living in you we think that the devil is sleeping the devil is not sleeping the, the spirit don't, don't sleep sometimes we we are like oh when you because we take it literally when the body dies or oh, everything dies no body dies spirit don't die our spirit, the spirit they live on. They don't, the spirits don't die. Demons, they don't die. They don't rest. So when we are asleep, it is by the grace of God. It's by the grace of God. Because Christ is, he didn't die for the church for nothing. That is one thing I've seen with Pastor Chris. The passion of Christ is in him. When he speaks, you see that there's something deep inside him that he, he wants to make known to everybody. It's not just coming to church and giving our tithes and offerings and warming the pew. But he wants you to have a lifestyle. The purpose by which Christ came 
for us when we were dead in trespasses completely we were as dead as a dodo bird the dodo bird you see it is like there's no there's nothing we were like that until christ came and revived us spiritually because we die spiritually there was no connection between us and god he came and by his sacrifices he made he made us alive again unto god thanks be to jesus for his death on the cross and i could see that spirit in pastor chris and in a way i have the same passion in me whenever i meet sometimes i could be very you know like my wife would say five you no know, americans would say fiery you know uh how, how what else did this say you know the, the, the Americans have a way of saying their English sometimes different from the English English, you know. <laughs> and um, when you see that, you know that there's something going on. So I said, ah, this man, sometimes he speaks like me. The passion in him, I can feel it. Though it's my first time of meeting and all that he spoke about now, you could see that he has the love of Christ in him. And also, I, I've been seeing that in his wife, uh, the First Lady Grace. Hallelujah. <laughs> I know you, you, you're all muted. It's okay. You know, so what I see is that these lads is the devil is not sitting still and saying, oh, come what may. Oh, I know I'll be judged. I've been judged already. The minute Christ died on the cross, the devil was judged. So he knows his time is very close. Every day brings him closer to the day that he will be taken and be thrown into the bottomless pit. He thinks about it and say, what? You know, let me tell you something, something that I've observed by reading and also checking other things, you know, that people sometimes post online. You know, some of these demons who fell, they are very violent, very violent that some have been chained, like the Bible says, you know, in the bottomless pit somewhere awaiting judgment if you go through the book of Jude. And some are let loose. Some also regret it. Why did we do this? We shouldn't. This is not our place. So in the spirit world, they have some of them who are, they call themselves the white angels, like they are the good ones. They are all condemned. When, as long as they were cast out from heaven to down here on earth, they are all demons. But some of them thinking, oh, probably God will have mercy on us. And so what they do is they try to tell men, this is what you can do. They try, like, we are helping man to succeed. No, it's not about man. It's about God. What they did to God, they disobeyed God. God cast them out. So some of them will come in a very nice way, you know, like we are helping you. But this is what in the church, unfortunately, some folks have gotten in touch with. You know, these people, they call themselves pastors. Forgive me, Pastor. Some pastors that I've seen, they call themselves pastor and they come and they say, Oh, we are I work with this so so and so spirit. This is so so and so angel. I said, Ah, in the Bible, we, we know a few angels. I know of Gabriel, I know of Angel, angel uh, Michael. And what about all these names that have been mentioned? We know Satan, the, the fallen angel. But what about the rest? They call, I say, no, 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 no. And they come in white clothing and they give things to them. Oh, we'll help you. Oh, just do this. And a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of Christians are bought into this kind of things. And they think, oh, if I yeah. go to the man of God and he gives me this direction, it may work. But it is not of God. Let us open our eyes. Shine your eyes. He says, Jesus said and answered unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. We are in those days. Come they on now. Right here. They are Amen. right here. And we as Christians, we have to open our eyeballs, spiritual eyeballs, to see where That's we right. are, what time it is. What wake time. Up. We have to wake up and smell the coffee. The coming of Christ is just at the door. You know, and sometimes even when we pray and we do all that we have to do, we sit back. And so we have prayed that maybe there's nothing else to do. We still have time to go out there and deliver. Because after we have prayed, we have power. We have to go out there to the street, even if it's for an hour. Let's deliver the message. People are on their way. You know. Come on now. 
Come on. No, the distraction. What are we doing ab about it? Are we just saying, oh, I'm going to heaven. I don't care about the rest. The rest of the world can go wherever they want. No. That's God right. That's right. Yeah. For a purpose. That after we have received the grace of God, we have to also move to pass it on to those, no matter what it takes. It may take time. God knows how he works. We have to carry the message to reconcile men. This is the message we are trying to reconcile men to God. We have been saved by the grace of God. Let us help others to also be saved, to see salvation, the way of salvation. It will be sad after we have gone and then we find out that most of our friends that could have been saved, we didn't do a thing about it because sometimes we are so comfortable. That's it. The devil is so crafty. The devil is very, very, very crafty, but thanks be to Jesus. He is the head of the church. It's not me. It's not Pastor Chris. It's not anybody. Amen. Else. Hallelujah. No. It is Christ Amen. himself. I'm pleading. Please let us not still sit still, sit on our loins thinking it will be well. Oh, if I don't do it, so, so and so. No, we have been ordained to go out there. That is where we see the signs and wonders, the power of the gospel. When you walk on these streets of Croydon, you see all these Indians, Asians, do you know the kind of spirit they are using? They, they, are, they are devilish. Don't consider sometimes we buy things there with me. Oh, yes, we have to buy, but it's okay. But they are not just there with their eyes like you and I said, no, no, no. If you know the spirit realm, the levels, the levels, this guy in Ghana who, for some reason, started practicing occultic you know, things and that. Uh, developed himself from stage one, two, three, all the way to, they call it about 33. He met Satan, eyeball to eyeball, was sitting third on the road to Satan. At the one point, he, he stood up, felt, you know, knelt on his, he got down on his knees and shook the hands of Satan and said, you are the, the coming savior. Not knowing, he didn't know what he was talking about. One day he realized that, hey, I thought I was looking for power. But I've gotten here and he was still empty. Yeah, I can give you his name later on. You can Google it and check him out. He said, I realized that that wasn't all. He, now he has thrown out all these. He led a lot of people into it. Some of the friends, they have died. Some have cra gone crazy. But by, by the grace of God, he's okay. But he says, there's no power but the power of Jesus. He met Lucifer one-on-one. -on -one like we are talking, and shook his hands. I said, oh, this guy, he went far. So we don't have to sit down and think that it's all well and good. The church is under attack. We used to meet in our house for prayer meeting on Fridays. And, um, you know, my wife, very American, feisty, you know, when it comes to things of God, very feisty. We are praying and we'll go down there. Other members will come, we'll gather in the basement, we'll pray and pray and pray and pray. One day I was coming home in the afternoon around 3 p.m. Then I saw a guy standing on the side of the building, looking at our building. So I started slowing down. I said, who is this man? What is he looking for? He was just looking at the building. He was an Asian guy too, looking at the building. Like, I said, what does he want? So he kept looking, looking. So I was driving slowly, slowly, slowly. And then I turned to my driveway and the, poof, the guy took off. So we met and as we're praying one of the days, I said, this is what I saw. We need to stand. And they thought I was joking. Lo and behold, the church that we, you know, it's the services that we used to hold in the basement for some reason fizzled out. We, we couldn't meet up to now. We couldn't meet unless we have uh, we have to go to the main church. You know, we, we have four campuses, so we sometimes meet in Chicago or Bolingbroke. So we will meet there and we do half nights and all that. But to meet in our house again, it has never taken place. Because the guy felt that something was going on in the spirit against his enchantments and divination because he was being challenged. We had the power to do that. We were challenging him. We didn't know. As we prayed and our prayers were carried up, something <clears throat> is in the spirit realm that started destroying. So he decided, he noticed where the power was coming from. And it was coming from nowhere but our house. He came then, whatever he did, he left. I saw him not like, oh, in a dream. 
physically. When I went back there, he was nowhere to be found. He was gone. Up to now, we haven't been able to meet in the basement to pray, except going to the main church to do our prayers. So the devil is not sleeping. We shouldn't be deceived because <laughs> the one that we are fighting, he's not sitting down, you know, drinking milkshake. He is planning daily. What do we do to these people so that they will stop attacking us? That's what Pastor was saying. That when these uh, smaller, smaller diviners, when they do things and they don't do it well, they go and they get whipped. It is true. They whip them and they say, "You have to do your work well." We That's have right. the, to continue to dismantle the things of the enemy. People come in the church. Look, the devil. Let me tell you, he has sent so-called pastors they are so-called pastors in sheep clothing they are in the church but they are not of god do we see them it is better to be saved you know to receive christ than to say i'm looking for healing or i'm looking for a breakthrough they are good but heaven should be the goal it is not people many people got their healing but probably on their way to to uh to, to hell. They, they are not looking for Christ. We have to make it a point that it is Jesus. It is not about our, he cares for our healing. What is coming? What God has planned for us? Me, I want to see it. And I hope you want to see Amen. it. Too. What God says, the Bible says, for what God has prepared for his children, it has never dropped into any man's heart or mind that, oh, I think heaven is like, he says, no, this is out of this world. And I want you to desire to see that place too. All these struggles and I want my children to be this. I want my daughter or my wife and my husband. I want to attain the highest degree like the thermometer. They don't matter. What matters is salvation. It is free. It is free for Jesus to come down here. The angels, the, the demonic angels, they know what we have. For God through Christ has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. But we are still sitting down and thinking, oh, maybe it's nothing. Hey, if we know what we have, the angels can't have it. The fallen angels, they wish they could have the chance, but their chance is over. They don't have that chance again. It is us human beings, even though we fell. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whom, whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. The devil has angels, his, his agents in the church, and they are drifting the church away. So when you go to church, don't just say, oh, I'm going for, for to receive breakthroughs alone. That is not it. God, for your own good, God wants you to have salvation first. It's the first thing, salvation, not healing, not money, not any other thing, but salvation should be the cornerstone, should be every believer's cornerstone. So if we are sitting in the church and all that we are looking for, oh, God, I need a breakthrough. I need, and we forget about salvation, that Jesus didn't come for, uh, for breakthroughs alone. He came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. And I'm praying that we will see this. So when we go, like I see Pastor Chris, I, I listen to him. I see the passion in him. You can see that this is a man of God, that if we push him, he will go far. He, he's ready to run with the church. For him to spend time, even on that man, I say, eh, this man was, is a very strong man because not too many people, the church in Chicago, we tried many times. We tried to do what we call Chicago, this thing that uh, we were trying to bring the poor to come and have, you know, we give them food, the church, and other churches collaborated and were giving things to individuals who couldn't have enough to put on their table. We did all that, but at the end of the day, all those things fizzled out. Now it's somewhere in Chicago. Our pastor, Dr. Isaac Pencil, we worship with the church called uh, Christ Oasis Ministries and uh, is uh, led by Dr. Isaac Pencil and his wife, Dr. I, uh, Cynthia Pencil. Very wonderful people. He held this thing that he said, please, let's help to keep the Chicago, it was called the Dream Center. We, we kept in, it in Chicago for African-Americans all came together to support it. It went on for a while and then the whole thing was given away and they, they took it to California. 
you know. So we have to be very careful. It is not about, yes, God seeks for our welfare, that the church will prosper. We will prosper spiritually first, physically, because if we, we prosper spiritually, definitely, physically, God will add what we need unto it. But let us first seek the face of God. It's not healing alone. So now these people come. If you go to Ghana, West Africa, all that people, thousands of people who are, can tell you about 99% sitting there looking for healing, breakthroughs. You ask them about salvation, they, they don't even know, or even their mind is not there. Why was, um, uh, what, the, uh, what, the, 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 uh, what do you call him? The, um, the disciple, Judas, he moved with Jesus, he was there. He was one of the 12, but how come he, he delivered Jesus to be crucified? He was a member. All that Jesus did, the, he had a mission. He had, his mind wasn't on being, just being a, a member of the, of, the, of the apostles, but rather he was thinking more of, oh, this man is here to help me be able to put food on my table. He's here to help me to um, make my soup taste good. <laughs> and uh, to, yeah, feed my kids and have a wonderful lifestyle. He he forgot about the spiritual side that uh -huh. Jesus gave him the opportunity that he may change his life. Well, I, I always people get confused. Why, why was Judas made an escape good? Judas wasn't made an escape good. No, it he was wasn't. His mind. He had a different perception. He, That's he right. He was the only one. They all saw something in Jesus. They said, ah, Peter, when he said, Jesus said, who do you say? What, what do men say that I am? Say, some say you are uh, John the Baptist. Some say you are Isaiah. You are Elijah. He said, so I'm saying, what about you? You, you, my disciples, you are. Because he revealed, just like I read from Matthew. He said, to them, to the people, Jesus will always speak in parables, right? And the people will be scratching their heads. Well, what is this man talking about? In private, Jesus opened up the, 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 the meaning of, of, the, uh, of the parable. So when, after Jesus said, behold, these things will come, there will be a time that there will be, no, there will be not one stone laid upon the other. So they are like, in private, if you read, he said, when they went to Jesus in private, and said, Lord, tell us when this will be. So Jesus always opens up with the disciples so that faith, our faith will be released. Faith plus nothing is equal, equal salvation. Faith plus nothing equals salvation. It's not about uh, my faith and my, the, the work I do, my faith and the money I give, my faith and how hard I sleep in the church and pray and jump and do my faith. No, 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 no. It's only faith alone. So Jesus opened the path of faith that they will see that he's not a mere man. This man is beyond anything. So all the 11 saw something in Jesus. But Judas, he didn't take Jesus seriously. This man is only here to help me. So, and what happened? He was the one who was keeping the money. So at any time, T, when he needed something, he would dip his hands and then he would take the money. Jesus said, he's the thief. You know, he will steal the money and then give it to, oh, uh, Maggie, why don't you take the money and make sure you kill, you buy that goat and kill it so we can have a nice soup and a, a nice time, barbecue and all that. He was a thief, he saw differently. That was his problem. He wasn't, I said, what about if Judah had not betrayed Jesus? You think Jesus wasn't going to be killed? Yes, he would, be, he would have been killed because that was the reason why he came. He came that he may die, that through his death we may have life. But if you avail yourself to the devil for the devil to use you, then you have made it possible. Jesus opened the door that Judas may have seen. No, this is not an order. He's God. But he didn't see that. He saw a different person says, this is the man that through him I'll be rich. And that is what led him that way. The rest saw Jesus differently, that you are the son of the living God. Amen. You know, so we go there. If we go to church, let this life in Christ be in us. It's not about healing. It's not about how rich I'm going to be. It's not how well. Look, people are dying. Many Come on, no. Hallelujah.
you know. So we yes. have to come to the point of making sure it's, this is it's, we are on an emergency. This is emergency time. It's not time to sit and relax and take it all easy. We have to be on the move because we are not home yet. We are not home yet. The devil has entered the church and he's come in, in a, a very crafty way that you and I, if we don't have the spirit of God in us, we will not know it. And before we realized, we would have been victims of the same thing that others are. But with the word of God and the word of truth, if we rightly read and divide the word of truth, we will know where to put A, B, C. And then you know we have sound doctrine. And this is how we can live a better Christian life. You know, so let us know that as we sit in the church, some are there not for the gospel. Some are there. They are agents of the devil. They are there to destroy the church. But I know we have the patience and the character to be able to handle these people and possibly for them to give their, rededicate their lives unto Christ. This is the bottom line. We, you and I, we have to be on the streets. After we have prayed and prayed and prayed like we do prayer every Saturday. After that, we're supposed to step outside with the power that we, if signs and wonders, how will signs and wonders come? They'll only say these signs will follow them who go out there. You know, so if we want to see the work or the hand of God, it is when we move out, then the signs and wonders will follow us. You can pray for the one that you meet on. It's oh, I don't go to church and I used to go, but of late, I can't even sit. My back, this is my problem. This is, and I bet you, if you will dare lay a hand on this person, something will happen. God honors his word. Then why are we here following God? He says, uh, anyone who believes in my, my son will have an eternal life. Can we take that to the bank? If we can take it to the bank, in the same vein, if we pray for the sick, we, we step out there and in faith, we can pray for as many that needs to be prayed for. And I bet you they will come back and give praise and glory and honor to our, our God. Amen. So we sit down tight, thinking it's okay. I have my salvation. <laughs> when Michael Jackson, before he died, he said he was going to perform one last uh, concert. And he said, this is it. There's a dangerous thing when the death is not a funny thing. This is it when somebody dies. You ask yourself, because uh, many times in America, some, I believe some people think that, oh, when I die and I go to heaven, uh, uh, I will tell God, hey, I'm, Amer I'm, I'm, I'm American, and therefore you have to open the gates of heaven <laughs> going. Or, or maybe our presidents will come, whoever will be there will, will speak on my behalf. Maybe Clinton will be there and say, oh, God, Jesus, oh, he, he's an American. He died as an American, so give him the chance. It is never like that. We always, people at the back of their mind, they have some perception like that, oh, the president, being an American, the president will speak for me and we will all have a free entrance into heaven. It is never so. It is from the right. bottom of the pit, you know. So we have to be rightly, be able to divide the word of truth and know where things should fall. Other than that, we will also become a distant for the devil. We have to do what we have to do while it is day. While it is day and we can see where, because an hour comes that Jesus is saying, no man will work. This is the time. Let us, the devil is smart. He keeps the world busy. Keep them busy. Let them, so that they won't rest. People are running, helter, skelter. Hey, I don't know how I'm going to pay my rent. Where is our faith? We have to release that faith. We have to take a step back and know that we are not as anybody else. There are some people in, in, in this country and even in America, you give them $1 and say, oh, I need a change. They will try to find a way to take even five cents, a dime or a nickel from you. No matter what you do, you buy something, your change, they think that, oh, you don't need those pence and, uh, and, 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 and pennies or cents. They try to keep because they think by doing so, they will amass worth. Richness or being rich doesn't come by stealing a dime here from people, a quarter here from people. They are there in the system. I don't want to mention names, but they think through that. If I don't give you that quarter, don't try to be smart. 
somebody got himself killed like that. You know, because the person, somebody will come buy coffee every morning before he boards the, the train. And for some reason, the guy will serve him and say maybe 35 cents is left. Instead of saying, sir, this is so keep the chain. The guy will, in deep in his mind, will keep the money. He did it for some time. One day, the guy came with a gun. They said, if this guy steals my quarters, I will kill him. And not knowing what the man was thinking, the guy, he came again. He's, he bought the coffee, the Dunkin' Donuts, and then his chain. He, you know, deliberately kept the chain somewhere, thinking, oh, I'm free. The guy pulled the gun and shot him dead. Meanwhile, the wife had given birth to a new baby girl about three days before that. He was killed for nothing because of nickels and dimes. But if God says, I will bless you, blessing, I will bless you. He blessed Abraham. He blessed Isaac. He blessed Jacob. And he has blessed even Israel. Israel now is in the state where they have to be. God will deliver them. This is the, the time of the church. The church is for both Christians and Jews. Christians, no, uh, Christians are the, the, the Gentiles and Jews coming together. We form the church. But God will save Israel. They have their time. I don't, there's no time to go into those things yet. You know, so I'm pleading with all of us that Satan sits in the church. He comes to have all that, we, you know, enjoy everything. His purpose is to twist the truth that we may not know. Because if you don't know the truth, you, you will be lost. You know, somebody will tell you, oh, salvation plus work will, is, uh, you know, uh, it's what, it's what, what salvation is, faith plus work plus this. That is, it is not true. It is not true. Faith alone is enough to give us salvation. And so this is what God wants for us. It is not a fight. We go on the street, it's faith. But the devil has kept the world so busy. Even as Christians, we don't have time for ourselves, let alone even our our God. These days, things are drifting apart. Oh, the days are evil. Well, pastor, some, I know Pastor, sometimes he will meet some people. Hey, John, I haven't, it's been weeks. Oh, Pastor, hmm, they, we try to find excuses. Ah, my wife, my daughter, my, my son, my work. It is all the work of the devil. Unless we stand in and pray and pray that these things will be exposed. Because we are not supposed, it is not by, by might. It is by the spirit of God. God has made, we said through Christ, he has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. Amen. We're not supposed to lack much. Even if we are poor, heaven is our home. One day you will, I say me, I'm not going to take myself out. So sometimes I came to America with the idea that hey, I'm going to be one of the richest people. I was very trying to be aggressive, but I realized that, hey, this place, if you don't take time, the next thing is death. You can die without you knowing it that you are, you are dying. But I realized that life is the most important thing. I gave, I had given myself already to God. And when I came, I made sure I, and I have done that for over 30 years up to now. I'm still walking in that truth. I still know that God. I still know that Jesus, that Jesus bought myself, my freedom from the devil. All the sins that I committed way before I came and after, I know he paid it all. Sometimes I sit down and look back. I say, oh boy, I'm even ashamed to talk about it. I say, I say if you confess your sins, it's more than faithful to forgive us and to wash us from all unrighteousness. So I believed him by faith. I know those sins. The word of God is true. I've been washed and cleansed. You know, many are in the valley of decisions. What are we doing about it? Are we only concerned about, I was surprised when pastor was talking about that guy. I said, this man went that length trying to rehab this guy. They gave him new clothes, even to the point they gave him food, removed the burdens. The place was a mess. Straighten things up for him that he may be able to look ahead. His credit, that he may have a good credit, have a good start in life. You know, and, and then move on. But unfortunately, when the devil got hold on, after they left him a while, oh, he's gone back and he's even looking worse. So I'm pleading that we have to be so 
alert in the church. The fact we shouldn't sit on our law and think that, no, 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 we have to be on the lookout with our pastor. You see something, the spirit can drop something in you. You let your pastor know, you pray about it. And so, oh, if we had not, because the devil, he knows his time is short. Jesus, you cannot reverse the, the death on the cross. The devil cannot reverse it. He can't do anything. People have met Satan, shook his hand, has promoted them. It didn't satisfy them. They thought when we get there, everything will be okay. But they're still longing for something. That hole that God has created, only God himself can fill it. The devil, the devil can never fill that space that God created in man. That this is my place in man. And nothing, no demon, no power can occupy that space except God himself by the power Amen. of the Holy Spirit. So I will encourage us as we sit in the church to be, to, to be alert and know the time and season that we find ourselves in because the days are evil. Satan Amen. sitting down eating cakes and pancakes. He is all out to destroy you and I. How do we count mm. those things? Unless we, we, we also be determined in ourselves and say, no, your children, if they are you know, drifting away, you know, one thing to look last, about a couple of years ago, there was a conference we went to and I was asking the, you know, the junior children somewhere in college and other things. I was asking them to tell me one character that they love in the Bible and why. I bet you for more than 20 kids, none of them was able to come up with any name. Or that they know, I mean, IT, I'm trying to be, uh, we give them the things. This is the work of the devil. We leave the children, we are running as parents and leaving the children away, they become victims. But we forget that when we are not there, these are the very people who are going to take over from us. If we don't feed them and strengthen them, so that if we are not there, they'll be able to stand as men and women and defend us. Then we don't have any future. Is it all about us? All that they did was focused on the grown-ups. Everything is about the grown-ups, the drug addiction, the this that is going on. Yes, but we need strong people, men and women, who will be able to look over the children, the youth that is coming, and to direct them. You think the future Amen. is... Those who are in the womb, no, it's yes, yeah, it's for them, but those that are sitting with us, we need to strengthen them. That's why sometimes when a mom or a daddy dies, the family crumbles because they were there doing everything themselves and they left the children that, oh, they don't matter. They don't matter when you are not there. That little boy, that little girl, he is going to be the one who will take over your place. How mm -hmm. did you build him or her? You left her alone. Now it's like, oh, my dad didn't show me anything. I don't know anything. I don't, they don't know left from right. Even if you left them billions of dollars, the smart ones that will come friends, they will take the money little by little from them. In the final analysis, they will become poor. You thought that I'm stealing money even from the government. I've stolen over 200 billion. I'm going to be okay for the next 5,000 years. My children's children will never be poor. But because you didn't build the foundation well for them, that foundation that you left will crumble. Yes. It will all be taken away. And how stupid that will be. You know, so we have to shine the Nigerians will say, I'm sorry, shine, let's shine our eyes on the yes. word. Every word of God is truth, nothing but truth, you know, and live by it. Because if we don't do that, we are lost. And I know. Pastor Chris, I, have, I can feel that uh, uh, connection. That I say, that's how I look at people. When I meet somebody, I pretend that I'm not, I don't, not listening to what they are talking about. I pay cl close attention to every word they speak so that if there's any deception, I'll tell my wife, be careful. This person, <laughs> there's a question mark. But I could see through his heart, he has an open heart. He has true love for God. You know, he, he's, he's not there for, oh, I want to be rich. No, he wants souls to be saved. You know, for going that length, and I know he did many things that he couldn't mention. Let us do it and get to the streets of Croydon. There are too many people there, this around these areas. There's a lot of people, even if we have to share gospel tracts, somebody may have time and read it. 
salvation. The Holy Spirit, some uh, Paul will say, uh, I saw, and and then and then and, and, and the other ones also what? He waters. Some of us will have to sow, some will have to water so that it will germinate. God, it is God who brings the increase. Amen. Unless we do that, nothing will happen. This is the work of the, don't think that, oh, it's just, it is the demonic forces, they, they are doing these things so that Christians don't become aware of the times and seasons that we find ourselves in. The days are dangerous. The devil knows his time is so close that he's doing, they don't sleep. They, I know that one of the headquarters is here in, these, in this country. They are working night and day and say, let us destroy the work. Let's put so much hard work on them, just like what happened to the children of Israel in Egypt. When they said, Moses, let my people go. Then Pharaoh said, even I'll make their work more harder. They should make bricks without straw. And they told Moses, how are we going to do it? You know, the devil decided to harden the, he said, no, it's not even that, it is God. He said, you want to do this? I will help you. Pharaoh, I will help you to, to be stubborn if you won't let my people go. I, God, I will help you by making you more stubborn. So through that, they will see the work of my hands. Amen. This God that we are following is not, <laughs> I, I wonder sometimes, I sit down and I, I, I find myself in tears. I said, what the mighty God, this man. Amen. Who is this God? Who is this man? I tried to figure, but nobody can figure God out. Amen. There are some people out there who speak the word. They have been said, they are agents of the devil. They speak the word, but without the spirit. They have the logo. There's no spirit back. Amen. And people who, are this, who have the spirit of discernment in the church, they are, they are, they are the ones who are able to see. The person will read the Bible, okay, like Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. They will speak it and they will twist the truth. They will twist it in another way. Mm. Let us open our true. eyes. This is how the devil comes. You won't come in any style that you think, oh, this one is the devil. You won't know him. He's like one of us sitting there, twisting the word. They have the logo, but no spirit behind it. Mm. And it to twist and to confuse people. So now I bet you, if you go to most churches, people are sitting there, are you saved? They don't even know. Mm. Oh, you, you go to America, go to Africa, West. a lot of people, some pastors will tell people, let's eat grass. You, you <laughs> eat grass. <laughs> what kind of Christianity is it? They have made it so hard, too complicated. This is not it. You know, how would they escape Jesus has died already. He will never come back and die the second time. Let us not try God. How would they escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Mm. Hey, what God mm. has done, he, it's, it's like me meeting somebody like Pastor Chris met somebody and said, oh, Pastor, I need him. Pastor put his hand in his pocket and said, this is all that I have. I have 10,000 you need one million, but I think I have ten thousand dollars. Take it, take it all. Pastor became you know, empty, nothing on him. God gave everything, Jesus. He gave the world, Jesus. And mm. then we have the time. Time is taken. Cut, cut, cut. We think, oh, everything will be okay when the time comes. The time is now, not tomorrow. And that's why even the word of God encourages today. If you hear the word of God, do not have oh, it in your, hands. your parents, your forefathers did. Don't postpone salvation. It is now. Yes. Some people think, oh, if I don't, uh, tomorrow is there. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. But even mm -hmm. God guarantee you tomorrow. When death comes, death is a serious thing that will fall on any man, especially if they, they do not know Christ. Because if you do not know Christ, then I have a friend who just, he, in America, New York, you will come to Ghana every year. And all that they do is to go and have a good time with women. I had my, one friend of mine, a pastor, called me last week or two weeks. He said, this friend of yours, he lives in, the, in New York. I live in Chicago. And he said, he died. This guy has died. He said, yes. They say he, he even died, not in America, in Ghana. He abandoned his wife and children, beautiful wife with beautiful 
three kids. They are now finished college and was living his life anyhow. God's sake, died in Ghana. And I'm like, what are you going to tell God? It is when you die, your eyes open. Like I said, in the spirit world, we don't sleep. The spirit don't sleep. Your soul, there's nothing like soul sleeps. Your soul will never sleep. You will see and then you will be like, what did I do? But how do you imagine, how do you reverse this situation? How do you come back? Even if you have, you know, if I have two minutes, I will be a changed person, but it's over. It is over when we close our eyes. It is over. Amen. This is more than serious. <laughs> it's like you are sitting on a time bomb. It's going kick and at any time T, it will go off and then you will be no more. Let us not, you know, make things hard for God. Life is in Christ. Let anyone you meet with trust, please, if you don't know Jesus, accept Jesus. He's coming. I will take it in. When you're on a plane, my auntie was telling me, there was serious uh, turbulence. There were Muslims, there were Hindus, there were Christians. There were... When it came to that point, the Muslims and the uh, uh, Hindus, they were all shouting the name of Jesus. What is in the name of Jesus? Why were they not calling their gods? Everybody was shouting Jesus. Hey, you Muslims do, you call on Jesus. They should have called on Muhammad. They called Jesus. So I bet you some of these people, deep inside them, they know Jesus, they believe Jesus. And if we don't take time, they will sit with Jesus. We who are saying we are Christians today, tomorrow, they will, God will open the door. And we who say we are Christians and not, we're not faithful to him, will be cast out. May God forbid that it will happen to us like that. So me, I have come in today not to be uh, that feisty uh, preacher. I'm not a preacher per se. I'm an elder, the dean of elders in our church, North Campus Chicago. You know, I'm the dean of elder over there. So my destiny is to come in as an encourager that we, we can do more as we are alive. Amen. Every minute we have, let us use it to the glory of God. Because there's time. Let's let's redeem the time. Let's back back the time. We have to buy it back and use it for the things of God. It's never too late. Every minute counts. So this is all that I'll say for our morning devotion. You know, I'll encourage each of each one of, of us to open our eyes as we sit in the church, as we look around us. The day is dangerous. There's a lot of deception going on. Are we going to be swallowed up by this deception? Your pastor is a good pastor. He has, he's filled by the spirit, his wife. I was looking at them. They didn't know. I check people out in a different way, in a different style. And I can put my bottom dollar that these are people who are filled with the spirit. That when they are leading, they will lead you to, straight to the presence of God. It's not about money. It's not about fame. But it's that the will of God will be done in you. You will prosper even as your soul prospereth. In Jesus' name. Amen. And thank you all for listening to my little, little something. Amen. Amen. Uh, sorry. Um, Kelvin, bless you for that uh, devotion and the transparency of your heart. Please, can you... Um, pray into those areas that you um addressed i mean it's so important and uh i just pray that uh, everybody receives the spirit of what he was saying there there's so much that we can feed on uh for it into eternity praise and be to God. kelvin go ahead thank you pastor heavenly father in the name of jesus christ we're thanking you for your word that has come forth Father, it is you who has called the church. It is you who is the head of the church. And uh, the rest will be a part of the body of Christ. You see it and you give your spirit to us that, Lord, we may also play our part as each one will contribute. As each part is contributing, Father, that makes the church to be alive. We thank you for the spirit of your, of your Holy Spirit, sorry, the, the power of the Holy Spirit that leads us unto all truth. Open our eyes, even the, our spiritual understanding. Lord, seeing we may see, 
remove every blindfolding spirit that the enemy ha- is trying to build bring to the church remove every obstacle in the name of jesus christ father that father we may be vibrant in your church we may not sit and be pure warmers, but father by the power of the holy spirit we will be able to execute oh god and deliver the work and the works that you have committed unto our trust i pray that our eyes those that are listening to me oh god those that are under the, the sound of my voice wherever they are father open the mind their spirit understanding, oh God, that they may understand the truth behind your word. By that, Father, we will have life. Any spirit of deception that will come from any angle, any quarters, we bind it in the name of Jesus Christ. We remove, oh God, any obstacles, any obstruction of the enemy in the church, oh God, that your people may not be able to walk or do that which we're supposed to do. Any difficult plans that the demonic world have placed on the church, Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we removed these and we set your people free one more time in the name of Jesus Christ, that, that we are free. We are not under any bondage because we have been bought with the price, even the blood of Jesus Christ himself. May we walk in this liberty, oh God, by which you have given unto the church. Father, may we be bi- vibrant believers. May we be believers who are looking out according to the word, things that are written in your word, things that are truth in your word. Father, may we walk in this truth and deliver ourselves and our children's children, oh God, even our neighbors and our friends, oh God. May we work while it is day because a night cometh when no man will be able to work. May we take advantage of the times that we have, not to say that we have forever. We don't have forever. We are here for a time, for a season. But Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, enable us we pray and i pray for pastor chris and his wife grace that father this grace this power that oh lord that you elimination that you have given unto each and of everyone father may this glow oh god that it will reach out to the uttermost parts of the world in the name of jesus christ the people who will come to them they are not only coming for 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 breakthroughs but they are coming for true salvation which can only be found in jesus christ may Amen. it that they touched, oh God, be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Surround them, oh God, with your angels in the name of Jesus Christ. They are going out, they are coming in. Father, I commit it unto your mighty hands. Uh. Let nothing good, oh God, be denied them in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh. May your goodness and your mercy forever abide with them, their home. Uh. Everything that belongs to them, uh. even their, their children, their parents, their siblings, their extended family. Father, may your grace reach out because of them unto them and may every member of the church prosper even as their soul prospers may goodness and mercy follow each and every one of them in the name of jesus christ that they will know truly the lord is good and his mercies endure forever we thank you holy spirit for giving us this opportunity this time to hear you bless us today tomorrow <laughs> in jesus mighty name we are praying with thanksgiving and may we all say amen Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise, amen. Be Praise be to God. We thank God. We thank amen. God. Amen. 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 Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Look, um, thank you, um, Kelvin. That was appointed. It was anointed. And uh, I believe that uh, you spoke into the hearts of everybody here there's something that we can draw on and draw from that we can go leave this platform and say you know what life isn't all what i expect it to be or should be but this is what it is and uh so important that you uh, you said that uh, the important thing is to know that we are saved more so than what we attain in this life and so many people, they're seeking uh, attainment in some, they're, they're searching and there is something that is out there. What I realize with humanity is that the soul is never truly satisfied. That if you, if you reach out for something, the more you reach out for that thing, the further it seems to get away from you. So a millionaire 
wants to become a billionaire. A billionaire wants to be, <laughs> wants to control the whole world, you see, and dictate what pe our people shall live. You'd be surprised. People, I say this to my, um, I say this to Grace all the time. I say, because Grace has this perception that if you're, well, she doesn't have it now, but she used to. If you are got money, you're very kind and that you're very benevolent and that you're very giving. <laughs> I said, Grace, you got it all wrong. The people that have money, they don't give their money away. They only use their status to raise money, but it's for their own glory. You've got to understand that. They are glorified through what they do. There's always a hidden agenda. They don't do it. I mean, you think you hear about all these benevolent things that happen in the world and this business, they donate money and everything. At the end of it, if you look down the line, a lot of these people have been oppressed. They've been used as guinea pigs to test what they want to do. They think these people are puppets in their hands just because they entice them with wealth or entice them with the, the promise of doing something. We have to have our eyes open. And so there's a lot of things that will happen. As uh, our dear brother said, that in the last days, we many will be deceived in the body of Christ because people will look for a sign and a wonder and they don't care about it. As long as it's a sign and a wonder, it's from God. Not the devil can do signs and wonders. What we forget is this. When we forget that uh, when Moses went to Egypt and he said to Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh just looked at him and said, who, who the dickens are you? What are you coming with? You see, and he said, and and, uh, <laughs> and uh, what happened is that Pharaoh um, looked to his uh, magicians or his uh, counselors, and uh, and it, they threw down their stick, and uh, it's turned into a snake, and it's like, whoa, okay, and then Moses invariably he threw down his stick, it turned into a snake. But what we overlook is that this is that Moses' rod that turned into a snake, it swallowed up the two rods that were of the magicians. In other words, that were, it had satanic influence behind it. Their rods were swallowed up. And so what you'll find is that the, the devil can come as an angel of light, presenting all that looks wonderful and everything else. If you don't know who you are in Christ, if you don't know the truth, you will be just deluded by that. So many Christians are following men. These signs shall follow them that believe. Signs follow you, not you follow the signs. And we have to turn the thing upside down and know that truly, who are you in Christ? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And so many people are searching for... Um, a prophecy, a word. Why do you have to search for a prophecy and a word? Why do you have to be affirmed by man? Why mm. can you not be affirmed by God? Why cannot? Why can't God talk to you? I went to, oh my goodness, I went to a meeting, a concert on uh, Saturday, Sinatch, and yes, yeah, she had a wonderful line up there and everything. And yes, she is a. Is she is a, a worshiper uh, in a sense that she she is well known within the Christian circles of producing beautiful songs as sung unto God and everything else. But I I went there and I thought, okay, it it is better for me to be in an environment where praises are being offered up to than in a secular concert or or shall I say um uh, what's that? They just had it the other day. Um, uh, the thing in, in uh, Glastonbury, Glastonbury, Glastonbury. It's better for me to be in a <laughs> in a Sinatch concert than being at Glastonbury, if you understand what I'm yeah. saying. The important thing is this, this, is what did I go for? Did I go just to be entertained or did I really go so that I could be in the presence of God, that I can hear from God, that I could receive something that will truly propel me into my divine purpose and destiny, that I may have a deeper, intimate relationship with God? I was there and I was blessed by what I was hearing. And I, I thank God for the, the message that went out for reached out to people to be saved and everything else. I thank God for the call and the invitation. 
but I still felt there was something more. God, you need to speak to me. You see, it's not enough for me to, um, you know, to decree and declare as the woman of God or the in, in, who ministers in some. She decreed and declared through us music and through our songs and through the lyrics and everything. Else, and we would recite it. It's something where I need to receive a revelation of truly who you are, that I know that when I leave from here, I'm not going to be the same. I'm not going to just be on a spiritual and emotional high. And when I leave, after a couple of days, I'm on a spiritual lower. It's like, whoa, woe is me. I need to know that God truly lives on the inside of me and that there is true thanksgiving in my heart towards God, whether I receive something or don't receive something, I know that all things truly work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. So in spite of everything, God is still with me and God is still for me. And you know what? I have an eternal perspective on my life. I have a not a temporal one, not this thing about I need something, Lord. I'm, uh, you're coming to God with a begging bowl or something. I need this right now. I need to know that I can look beyond my own needs and see the needs of other people and be able to say, God, as I look beyond my own needs, you're going to make provision for my needs anyway. God does that. <laughs> so when I was in that meeting, I just as much as I was rejoicing, I was thinking, okay. God spoke to me in a, in a way that it had an eternal perspective on it. Because there was a, and this is for me, I'm not saying it's for everybody. You have to know what you receive. But what happened is that there was a young group that came up. They were a young group. I've never heard them before. And you know what? When they came up, and they sang, and they sang. It moved me to tears. It wasn't because it had the right beat, it had the right sound. It had, you know, some people think if it sounds right, it's it's anointed. It's not about the sounding. It's about the heart. The, there is a message that God wants to unveil to each and every one of us, so that we have a true revelation of who He is. And as they sang, I, God gave me a vision. And for those of you who don't know, he gave, he gave me a vision. And it's something that God has been speaking to me about for a long time while in terms of what he started. God doesn't, God completes what he starts. God is not a God that you start something and then abandon it. He completes what he starts. If you're faithful to him, God will complete it to the very end. That's why I don't get concerned about my economic or material condition because I know that God is a God is a provider. He's the source of my life. I don't look for resources. I look for the source because the source will make provision for the resource. You see? And so what happened? I looked and then God just said, son, can you remember what I did with my people in Kenya, can you remember what I did? I raised up a people that would worship me, that would manifest the grace that I gave them, that would do things that were beyond natural perception and comprehension, that even pastors and leaders would say, I've never ever seen such a thing in all my life, that they would desire these people to come into their congregation to minister. He said, son, I want you to raise up a people that will be worshipers. Just as you see these young people, he showed me the young people and true to their culture, true to everything, but loving God. There is something about loving God that when you love God, God can minister in and through you to affirm and confirm his word with signs following. God is not limited by culture. He's not limited by color. He's not limited by creed. God, if you have the right heart attitude, God will minister through you for his desire and his will. God showed me 
as I raised by the by the grace of God, uh, God positioned me, and I'm talking about a person of who was born in England of Jamaican background. I'm not on Maasai. Many of them looked at me and said, are you a brother? Because <laughs> I look like a Maasai. <laughs> I said, no, I was born in England of Jamaican purity. They wondered. I think, why have you come to us? I said, God. God raised up a people that he would prophetically speak into their lives and say, you will do this, you will do that, you will be seen here, you will be ministering to tens of thousands, you would be in arenas, you would be in fields, reaching out to people. Even as I would prophesy, God would prophesy through me. I'm thinking to myself, Chris, what are you saying? You shouldn't be saying things like this. As I spoke it and it came forth, I asked the question as I was with 250 pastors, leaders, chiefs, men of God, people that love God. I said, have you ever heard anything like this before? To a man, they said, never, never. Let me say something to you. I'm going to say this because I haven't spoken passionately like this. You haven't heard me speak like this. But I'm going to tell you that God is real. Within two years of that spoken word, everything God spoke, it happened. It happened. This group of people, Maasai people, that had giftings in dance, in, in, in singing, creative, creating things, they, and they love God. They were called to the biggest churches. They were... Um, the worship team that opened the outreach meetings to tens of thousands of people. I don't speak about that. You know why? Because I know it wasn't me. I was just a conduit for God to work through. Why? Because I love people and I love people that have been rejected. They're the lowest and they're the most rejected tribe in all of Kenya. They have many tribes, in, but they're the most recognized and the most rejected god can do anything and god said it on that saturday god said i have not finished yet because the group of people they were from 18 to 45 that we trained thousands of people god drew to what he started and out of it there was a, a there was a remnant of people that god said i will use you to bring my word and to bring my glory to that nation. Tribes of different colors, they stood there and they stood in wonder as these people, these men and these women ministered under the anointing of God. I say God can do anything. And what I'm gonna say to you is this, you have to know you have to search your heart. Is it because you want to be elevated or is it you want to give God all the glory? You have to know. And you have to recognize the spirit of God and what he is saying. As um, our dear brother Kelvin said, Judas was not of the right spirit. It's not that God singled him out, but he, by his own will, he decided that this was, that, yes, okay, Satan can't possess you unless you're willing to be possessed. God is not going to pick someone out and say, well, you're going to be just used of the devil. God doesn't do that. He's a good God. He doesn't, God cannot be tempted with evil or, in fact, tempt someone with evil that's not god and sometimes we think well god you're the you're the you it's because of you why there's so much calamity and destruction and everything it's the devil we wrestle not against principality we ne wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places we have to know where we stand
And you have to search your heart. Is it of God or is it of moi, me? Is it about my reputation? Is it about my status? I know a lot of people that are doing good works, but they're not necessarily doing God works. People out there, they've been doing benevolent things, but they have a hidden agenda. You will do things in this world and you get the accolations and the awards and everything else. And you know that it's not as unto God, but you will, you already got your reward. Your reward is temporal. <laughs> it's not going to last into eternity. It's temporal because of the motives of your hearts. And you, not, you have to know that your heart towards God is pure. You have to know that you're transparent. It's not about, oh, you know what? Thank God for the gift and I'm going to use the gift and everything else. And you know what? I'll just take everything that comes with it. As you've given it back to God, are you saying it's because of God? Or are you saying, I'm the man of the hour with the power? Or I'm the woman of the hour with the power? You've got to give everything back to God. And it's, it's that fear and that reverence that says, without God, I am nothing. And I just thank God for what Kelvin has shared. He said many things, and there's so many things that you get. But I want you to know there's eternity that has been sown in your heart. And I want you to know that that's what you should be seeking every waking moment of the day. What is my divine purpose here? Not what can I divinely receive so that I can say I'm blessed and highly favored. We're all blessed and highly favored because we're children of the most high. We're blessed and we're highly favored. We're heirs of the Father and we're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. That means we have, a, we have a rich inheritance, but yet there is a divine purpose upon every one of our lives. And we need to say, as Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. I've finished my course. Henceforth is laid up for me a crown, which a righteous judge shall give me on that day. But not only for me, but for those that, who love his appearance, that are seeking him, that are just waiting, not in, not in condemnation, not in guilt, not in, oh, am I saved? Am I truly? You can't wait until the appointed time. You have to know that you're saved. You have to know that you have been, <clears throat> that what Jesus accomplished for you is finished. You have to know that as individuals. This is not about at the point, I'm going to get myself. In the moment of getting yourself ready, you've missed it. You have to know that you're ready every waking moment of the, time, of the day. So your desire must always be towards the Father. Towards not my will, but thy will be done, O Lord. And you might say to yourself, well, I read the scriptures. I read it all the time. You're going to have to leave your father and your mother, even your children. And you think, no, I, I've got a responsibility. If you love your children more than Jesus Christ or the father, you've missed it. If you love your, your husband more than Jesus Christ, you've missed it. If you love money or your status or your job more than Jesus Christ, you've missed it. Jesus said it. Take up your cross and follow me. You've got to leave. In other words, they're not talking about, um, God, Jesus is not talking about, don't take up your responsibility. He's talking about, put me first. And I love Junior. And Junior, I'm going to come over to you. Matthew 6, 33, and it's always a continual reminder. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, <laughs> his righteousness, is the right way of doing things. Amen. Wrong way. Some Christians, they do, they do the wrong way of doing things. But you will see them. You'll stand and you see them. You'll be in awe of them. But they're seeking it the wrong I can tell you some things about esoteric, devilish things that they will do. They will seek. <laughs> Can't hear. 
I can't hear either. You're oh. muted, Chris. Can't but hear the, you, Pastor. The devil didn't want to share that one. <laughs> Amen. He didn't yeah. want to share that one. Uh, yeah. Let me say something to you again. Pastor, you'll have to repeat that bit then. Because some of uh, us missed it. Let me say something to you. There are some people that they will seek for powers and abilities and gifts and signs and wonders. And uh, I dare brother Kelvin touched on it. They will go and they'll go through rituals. They'll look for, to have a prophetic gift because people always are fascinated by prof prophecy. They can tell you what you had in your fridge. What's what you got in your fridge got to do with anything? What's your diet got to do with anything? But they will tell you, and because of that, because you have itching ears, you will give in to that. And you, you, to whom you yield your members, servants to obey, to obey. To them, you become servants to obey. You're out eating out of their hands. And when they eat out of their, you eat out of their hands and they feed you, you feed, you will feed on temporal things, temporal, because they're not eternal, they're temporal. So it may for a season happen, but then it's like, God, when God gives, it, gives you anything, it, it adds no sorrow and you will find sorrow. I know a lot of people that have been sorrowful after receiving prophecies because that is destroyed them emotionally mentally because it's a proper lie that they have received and it eats yeah. them up and they leave fellowship they leave i'm not saying they leave god but they leave fellowship because they say that was mm -hmm. a lie they sold me a lie and there's lots of things i could share this morning but let me say <laughs> make your election sure in Jesus Christ. That's all I'm going to let it be Christ centered. Focus on Jesus. When you read the word, read what Jesus said because it's the Father that speaks for him. Know the heart of the Father through Jesus Christ. He's your foundation, He's your rock, He's your st stability. You build on no other foundation but Jesus Christ Himself. Be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Don't let the devil deceive you. It, it will happen. Many will be led astray because we want, we fo we're followers and we're not leaders. We're followers. We follow. Don't be a follower. Be a leader. Hear what God is instructing you to do and say. Be all that God wants you to be in Jesus name. Amen. I, look, I could say, Junior, go ahead. If you can. Are you still there, Junior? Uh, yeah, sorry, just getting back in the fan um, as you do uh, saying that. Uh, yeah, so much has been said, and uh, our brother, <laughs> bless you. Now we could see where uh, <laughs> Evangelist get, Jenny get her uh, a fire from, as you said. <laughs> get the fire from the head of the house. Um, nevertheless, the, the question is, as you would say, when Jesus said, what 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 does the matter? What does what do they say? What do what does people say I am? So the question is, what do they say in your church that you are? What what do they say you are? If you don't mind me asking, what do they call you, my brother, Kelvin? Yes, in the church. Yes, they, in the encourager. They know when they, we are down, things are down. That's what they, they, they call they, you. So 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 you're like a psalmist. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's why the I expiration. I'm the uh, uh, Barnabas. You know, he was the a son. <laughs> you know, that's all that. I mean, it's a, it but comes. So, now. So. <laughs> Go ahead, Junior. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, no. not too clear. 
oder Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 yeah go ahead. Okay. Okay. So, so are you an evangelist as well, my brother? Or no, I was <laughs> the uh, when we first my wife my wife came and we went to the church. Uh, the pastor, me, I, I'm kind of laid back. I preferred to push my wife, you know, because you know how she is. So I said no. You, you go and do it. You know, I, I will encourage her to do it, but if she's tired or she needs help, I will do it. I will come in to help. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Thank you. The, the, the reason why I ask, because you see, like you said, you, you've you mentioned so many so many points, and I really want to, because uh, I think Pastor Chris Garner covers um, a whole lot of points. There's no need to, uh, Is it the, the topic that you speak about is no stranger topic here. If our brother Raphael is here, he'd probably be loving, jumping in his seat. I don't know. He's probably doing somersaults and all sorts right now. Uh, because this topic is uh, one that, and Sister Julie will tell you, is one that is, is minister here about, you know, we have to uh, be cautious, uh, uh, be, you know, just watch, be a watchman and uh, not to be deceived or get caught off guard and all this kind of stuff, especially the time and the seasons that we're living in. Yes. And now we need to redeem the time because it's short. And uh, you mentioned uh, a key point, which is obviously uh, the actual church, as we would call it, the church. Um, and you mentioned the deception that is going on in the church. And let's just say, like I said, Pastor Chris has already gone through. So I don't need to take up the time going through that because that's a sore thumb of ours, um, especially people on this platform. People have gone through church hurt that is, that is on this platform. People have gone through so much issues that the church has caused itself uh, to make people uh let's just say draw back mm -hmm. from the works of god draw back from making themselves available mm. to god and it's still going on uh mm. it's still going on to this previous day like you said the devil is crafted the way how he comes in mm. and there's so much stuff that is going on uh, even uh, you talk about concerts and all these kind of stuff and Christ, uh, gospel artists. I mean, there's so much stuff that you probably touched on that the world has now become so entwined. The church, sorry, the church has become so entwined with the world that mm. you can't see the difference. You yes. can't see the difference. But the people of God who knows the truth, as the word says, know the truth and the truth has set, set you free. When you know Christ, because Christ is the truth, he is the word, he is the life. So no man could come unto the Father but by him. Once you know the truth, it shall automatically open your eyes to see as accordingly. And yes. one of the things that the Lord has uh, blessed me in my spirit to do this year is to pray for leaders and leaders such as yourself. Hence why I ask you, what does man call you? What, what do they say you are? Because some well, people could give titles, but not what God gives <laughs> as accordingly. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that you said an encourager, because then you're talking about what God has drawn you to. Exactly. Not what man sees you are as, as according to how they perceive people to be. And if you, uh, well, you might not, maybe it's the first time you hear me speak. But as according to what the Lord has told me a little while ago um, mm -hmm. about a titleless minister which mm -hmm. means, uh, and the way how he describes this, it took me a while to understand the way how he describes it, um, mm -hmm. according to um, being a titleless minister, is to ensure that everyone knows. So I'm a prime or practical example, so that mm -hmm. everyone else will know that they can achieve and do the same as the others with a title are doing. Yeah. <laughs> because when God bless you with a gift, he blesses you. Amen. And if it, it, it's a free gift, like you said, uh, uh, salvation is a free gift. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not bending you. It's, it's there for you. It's yes. given on to you. Mm. So it's the same as God has blessed you with a talent or a gift or an ability or whatever. Some people will rely only on uh, what a bit, uh, minister, a pastor, preacher, bishop, prophet. They wait till that, you know, they, they, they basically the, the, the title people, they prey on these people that don't know the yes. truth for themselves mm -hmm. and then they look to these people 
to pray into a healing area, not knowing that you could say to that affliction yourself, mm. be healed. Exactly. Instead of waiting for someone to say, be healed. <laughs> yes. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So yes. when, when I go about what I'm doing, and people are saying to me time and time again, and even I met this, uh, you you, talk, you said to Paul, about Pastor Chris and meeting the person who was conflicted and uh, had a problem and an issue and asking for help. And we know Pastor Chris very well here. Yeah. He would give the, the very shoes and the clothes off his back just to make sure that person gets. And I met this uh, homeless lady and she really touched me. And it's the same sort of court message as you're saying. Mm. And I think one of the messages that we are passing by what you've said is, why are we wasting time? Why are we wasting time? Mm -hmm. Knowing the truth for ourselves, sitting mm -hmm. in the churches and getting fat and not bringing the message to yeah. others out there. Mm -hmm. And this woman really, I mean, it's not the first time I've spoken and helped these homeless and people who are uh, troubled and sort of stuff like that. Many, many people on this platform know this. And I'm not here tooting my own horn. But the problem is this woman really touched me because uh, what she has said and how the conversation went and how I see she was deeply in need of a rescue mm. that I could not give her. Let me make this clear. I know I said, sorry, I, I said I was going to pray, but let me make this clear. I said, because I realized, even though I'm in it, and I, I, at the last end, I said to her, please allow me to pray with you because she's she doesn't she believes that there is a higher power but she does she doesn't believe in that sort of in in the gods that whatever so she believes in something because the advanced conversation led even though she said i don't want to talk about it don't want to talk about god i don't want to hear about god and all this kind of stuff but in the end she allowed me to pray with her and for her mm -hmm. <laughs> eventually it got down to that point because yeah. guess what if i meet someone mm. that even if I don't start the conversation, we go, let's guess what? It's going to finish with God. <laughs> it's going to finish with me either ministering to you or praying for you or whatever the case may be. But this woman really touched me because I see far beyond what she was trying to say to me and what she was saying. Mm -hmm. I see far beyond. I saw a heart that she was reaching out for a rescue, a yes. freedom that yes. she was looking for in what the talent and the ability that she possessed. Mm hmm Right. I mean, I would have to share this story another time so you can understand fully. But the point is that she, let, let me tell you, that day, mm. um, I have an appointment because I'm a communication engineer by trade, right? And I go to clients' house and fix their broadbands or communication systems or whatever it is, right? So okay. in the sense of um, going to this uh, person's house and whatever, I start at eight. And I met this woman outside at the little boxes that you probably see some of us in, in engineers in uh, for, for the Londoners who knows what I'm talking about. And this woman came and she stood there and she approached me and blah, blah, blah. We had a conversation. Didn't leave there till almost 11 o'clock. Now, the point I'm trying to make about this is that she did not want to let me go. <laughs> she did <laughs> not want to let me go. I'm in my van after coming back from uh, cash point and helping her whatever the way that I can. She hold my hand. And she literally was standing there saying, just one more question. Just mm. please, I just want to know this. This is the woman that's holding my hand. And I said, so look, I have to, I have to go. But the point I'm trying to make is that how much of us will take the time knowing that my schedule was tight and trust me, my schedule was tight that day, mm. would spend the time to give the word that was given to you of hope to someone else out there Consider, I don't really care what's going on in the so-called church building at the moment, because guess what? I know the truth and I need to bring the truth to the rest of the world that is depressed, lonely, being captive, uh, being um, held hostage by mm. the devil. Yes. That is the passion that we all should have. Mm. You go and listen, to, how long can you be sitting in a building for? Mm. How long can you be in a place where, how long can you, sorry, I'm going to be right up to it. I can, how long can you come on this platform every single Tuesday to Thursday mm. and still not be changed to affect change in your, wherever you are, your community, mm. your workplace, speak to someone about the love of God, tell them your experience, where you're coming from and minister the good news to their hearts and their lives. How 
long can you do that for? Without, uh, anyway, sorry, my brother. I know, uh, <laughs> but the point I'm trying to bring to our hearts and our attention is, what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? If we are looking for the church leaders to make the church right, we have a long, long time to go. We, because there's so much politics. There's so much, uh, you know, the church has now become like uh, the presidency in America or in, in Britain or in, it, it's it becomes so lunatic. It, co it becomes crazy. We have the right wingers and the left wingers in church, you know, this is in church. The politics that is going on and you sit there and think you have to get it right before you get it right in church before you could go out <laughs> you have another thing coming i just want to say very quickly brother jody the, the, the church is a business now i feel oh yes indeed indeed my sister and that's and that's that's correct and this is and i didn't want to go down to that line but the point i'm trying to make is the formality of what we know of what it was is not the same and we now have to wake up pray for our leaders and and I'll use you as a point of contact this morning my brother Kelvin and your lovely evangelist wife uh, that we all come to know and love and of course pastor Chris is here pastor Raphael and all you other guys here as leaders all of you are leaders in your own right I keep mentioning this don't think that because you don't speak like brother junior you don't have a title like pastor Chris or you don't uh they call you this and they call you that let that not st uh, sorry let do, let that stuck in Spanish now, let that not stop you from ministering the good news and doing good unto others the Bible talks about let man see after you do all the praying to God and seeking him and doing righteously let man see your good works and they come unto God and they will worship the God want to know the God you worship because of that reason the last thing I'll say do you know what the lady as they would say, what what does man say? Um, you know what the lady called me? She's like, you must be a reverend or you must be a priest or you must be. This is what the lady was saying. I said, wow, you go into the title of reverend. I mean, I heard pastor before and probably vages, but you've gone to, uh, I'm sorry, you've gone to a uh, reverend. I was like, wow. But I said, as according to what God said to me, and I see it playing out, a titleless minister, whatever man sees in you, that will you will be unto them paul says i will be all things unto all men so that they may come unto uh god that they may know god and i pray for every single one of you this morning that you don't need a title but all you need is the power of god inside of you christ himself to transform your life and to transform the lives outside so i want to pray using you guys as a point of contact to touch uh to to pray that the lord will uh, bless, deliver, change, equip, refine the leaders of our the so-called churches today. That God will open our eyes to see, to move, and live and have our being in him. So, Father, we thank you this morning for my brother's message. And you know that is a message that has been echoed like so greatly on this platform. About the time, the season. And Father, even as the son of Zacharias, the, 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 the sons that they, they knew the time and seas, they knew what to do. You even, according to the time, you even said to the Pharisees and you said to the scribes, you said to the, uh, uh, the priests, when they all gathered together, that they knew how to tell the times. They, they knew how to look in the sky and to tell what is going to happen, but they don't know the time that is now. Help us not to be those fools. Help us not to be those people that don't redeem the time that don't see it open our eyes in fact open the leader's eyes and i thank you for my brother and as i use him as a point of contact as i caught into my and pastor chris and evangelist jenny father lord and pastor Raphael and father it, and every single person on here i pray that father you will open our eyes that we will be the change that you want hey that we will be the change that you want. That we will be in that peculiar, that we will be that peculiar nation, that peculiar people to be able, Father Lord, to demonstrate, as we heard, the power, the magnitude, the grace of God that will yet cover all that we are and who we are in you. That people may see and know and come on to worship you. 
their God. I pray, Father Lord, that you help us to be an elevation of your church. Hallelujah. To be a reforming and refining of your church. To be the fire. To bring the light. That Father that is so lost in this generation. We pray for leaders that who are backslidden. Leaders who, Father Lord, has gone astray. Father, for a repentance for them. Father, we stand in the gap right now. Hallelujah. And intercede on their behalf. Using the, the, the leaders that we have here as a point of contact. Saying, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy upon your children, upon the church. And as we know, Father Lord, as it says, if my people who are called by my name will only, only turn, they will turn from their wicked ways. Turn around. Repent. Hallelujah. Father, you will hear from heaven. You will hear from heaven. And I pray that you hear us right now as we repent on the behalf of our leaders who are leading your churches. I'm not talking, Father, you know I'm not talking about these leaders of the states and all these manner of people. I'm talking about your people, the one who are shepherding you a place over others to tell them the truth, to speak the good news, to minister unto them, not to captivate and hold them in ransom in their churches, in the place or buildings, but Father, to send them out. For that's what your word says. Send them out in the byways. Send them out in the cities. Send them out in the valleys. Send them out to preach the good news. For that's the great commission that you've commissioned us to do, Father Lord. So, Father, help us as leaders not to be caught up in this world's gimmicks. Not to accept what the world accepts. Because you say we're in the world, but we're not of it. <laughs> and we know everything that is good is not God. But we, Father, we pray for a godliness a righteousness, right standing with you. Hallelujah. A transformation. Father, deliverance from all of these plagues of this life that we will be able to say on that day that, Father, you have done it for us. And you can say, well done, my good and faithful. You have obeyed. You have done what I've asked. Thank you, Father, for your work. So thank you, Father, this morning. As we bless you. In Jesus' most wonderful name we pray. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. May his name be glorified and lifted up forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Bless you guys. Thank you for listening. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Junior, for sharing your heart and uh, for your prayers. And uh, I believe that uh, it was well received um, in from the Father, <laughs> in the Father's name. And... Uh, it has far reaching and it will have far reaching effects. Um, thank you again, um, Kelvin, for ministering. Um, Pleasure. Um, it was such a blessing and uh, to hear what God spoke through you. Um, I don't know if um, anybody else wants to comment or wants to uh, pray or just want to bless God at this moment in time. Please um, feel free to do so. Um, much has been. I just want to say, Chris, that as anybody on the platform, when things are going well, I had a visit from the devil because that's what happens to me. Like yesterday, I was doing really well. Like I was getting things doing in, and then I thought, I oh, really, I'm looking forward to Tuesday. I can come on back on the platform. My phone went off, you know, because it's my routine. And I thought, you know what? I'm so, I really want to go on the platform. It's my routine on Tuesday to Thursday. So my phone just totally went off. Right. So I prayed about it. And basically, I found the right charger. And I thought, this always happens when basically, I want to pray or I want to do something to do with God. The devil actually appears from nowhere. So anybody that has those sort of experience, when things are going wrong, start praying because today I'm on the platform. Because that's what the devil does when things are going really well. 
he just pops in and he just thinks, right, I'll mm. make you worried. I'll make you really anxious. Right. And I'll stress you out that you won't be able to do the things that you want to do. And it was just like, it was like so many times that's happened. Like, you know, it's like when we were moving, me and Grace, it was like, how are we going to do it? Two girls on our own. It worked out amazing. And then it was like yesterday, I had some work done in the house. And then I was thinking, gosh, how am I going to, because I, because I'm poorly, I don't do online banking, I do transfer. And then I managed to do it. And I managed to sort my phone out because it's really important. And I thought, you know, how is it that every time I'm in my toy and I'm getting my keys, right, the devil always tries to destroy it and then it always comes up because I start praying, right? I really do. It's like when I got stuck in the bath. I start praying. I was like, Jesus, don't, because I couldn't get out. Two weeks later, I got a brand new shower from the council. And it's like the devil always tries. So anybody that's on this platform today, if you're full of joy and then you have moments of despair, like to me, do the, do the word because I'm telling you now, the devil won't win because I shouldn't be on this platform this morning because my device wasn't working, right? It really wasn't. And I started praying about it and I'm on this platform and that's all I've got to say. Keep going, keep praying and keep believing because it'll happen. Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Rita, for that testimony. And uh, we always have to keep on keeping on in spite of what we're going through. And uh, I know that, you know, I keep reiterating the word of God that you, you have to count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, trials and mm -hmm. tribulations. You count it. It might not feel like joy. <laughs> it's certainly not joy at the time, but you count it as joy, knowing that all things are working together for good. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, trials and tribulations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith, you can be tried to the extreme. The trying of your faith worketh perseverance, patience, and the perfect, complete, and the entire purpose of all of this is that you may be complete in him, Christ Jesus, wanting nothing in other words you come to a point where you say devil you can't move me again sorry you have to try something else i've got over that hurdle mm -hmm. God wants you to progressively grow in christ that's yeah, why man. you encounter many things and many trials in your life it's not just um the devil doing it but god will allow it because he wants you to be transformed completely into the image of christ on the inside and on the outside. You Amen. want to stand sure in who you believe. And so we put our trust in God and we, uh, you know, God will put parameters around us that the devil cannot exceed. And so don't worry about it. Just commit everything into the Lord's hands. He's got your back. He's got your front. He's got every aspect of you. And just know that you've been sealed for eternity in Christ as you keep your eyes focused on him amen. Jesus. amen so bless you thank you each and every one of you and i pray that you have been empowered this morning you have been strengthened this morning you have been encouraged this morning and you have been instructed this morning in the counsel of almighty god wisdom wisdom is the principal thing and let, let, wisdom and understanding, let us understand the workings of God in our lives and know that all things are working together for our good. Amen. So bless you, everyone. Amen. Have an impactful day. Be a witness. Shine. Shine for Jesus. Amen. And God be glorified in every respect. Um, thank you, Kev, um, Kelvin, again. I just want to pray for you and just um, 
I, I know Junior has. I just want to pray, God, for you and uh, your family right now. Amen. And uh, as you're here in Britain, that God will favor you in every which way. Heavenly Amen. Father, let's thank you again for our dear brother, Kelvin. Um, he's here. He's here with his family, his daughter, uh, his dear wife, Jenny. Father, we thank you that I know that they have not just come out of their own volition and their own will, Father God, but I know that there is a divine assignment upon their lives, Father God, that even when they will return, they will not be the same as how they came over, that, Father, you would have opened their hearts and their spiritual eyes that they will see you in a greater dimension. And so, Father, I pray that truly you'll use them mightily while they're here. Amen. Father, that you'll confirm your word through them with signs following and that there will be a witness of your love. And Father, that signs following, Father, souls saved, people healed, set free and delivered. Amen. And through them, you will use them, Lord, mightily. And so, Father, I thank you for the word that has gone forth this morning, the message that we have received, Father. I pray that that will continue to germinate yes, and bring increase in our lives and that we will come go from excellence to excellence in you, Christ Jesus. And so, Father, I thank you, Father, for their provision right now, that they will not lack for anything concerning your will. And, Father, mm -hmm. God, that they will return to America enriched beyond their expectation. Father, I thank you. I pray for their health. I pray for their strength. I pray, pray for their peace of mind. And I speak and I decree peace, perfect peace, whilst they're here in England, in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Father, I thank you for your divine favor and your open heaven over their lives that you continue to pour out into them as they look to release that which they have received let it be so father god bring increase in jesus name amen and amen and so be it. hallelujah god bless you amen thank you pastor chris thank you and your family we love you now that we've made the connection probably in chicago once no matter i leave early morning to go to work but on weekends, we will see how things go. Maybe every now and then I'll chip in to help my wife and then we'll try to connect and get some things across. Amen. Uh, open by which every joint supply. So all of y'all, everybody should supply something by which every joint supply. You know, gradually we will get there. We will get to the promised land. Jesus is coming. Don't give up because the devil wants to give you you know, he's, you're 75 years and he takes your eternity. We shouldn't allow that. 75 years, it doesn't even come to that. 80 years of glory, what glory, of pain and sorrow. Jesus has given us everything. Amen. Even if we suffer here, we know we will live with him forever. Amen. Thank Amen. you all for listening. <laughs> uh, again, bless you. And uh, bless you, each and every one of you. Have an impactful day. Um, be a witness, and uh, to God be the glory. Great Amen. thing he has done Amen. and will continue to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless Amen. you, everyone. And by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow. Sure. So have a great day. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, Adam, Adam, Donna, Raphael, Cheryl, Seema, Marcia, Shanique. Margaret, Grace, bye. Bye bye. Bye. Have a good day. Bless you all. Bless you. Thank you.